Hi, welcome to another video on linear transformation on how to diagonalize a linear transformation. Um, from the first, in the first video, if you haven't watched that, the link will be in the description. From the first video, we tried, we diagonalized um, a, um, a transformation from R cube to R cube. In this uh, example, we are going to look at the transformation from R4 to R4. So if you have not watched that video, the link is in the description. Make sure you go and watch that video before you come back to this one. Now, in this particular video, um, we are trying to also diagonalize the transformation. But as you see in this case, this transformation is not diagonalizable, right? So this provides an avenue to learn um, when a transformation is diagonalizable and when it is not. So this will be a good learning example for that. So now let's dive in into this problem. All right, so, um, so let's begin here with, okay, okay. So, um, so let's look at, um, first of all, um, like we, like we mentioned before in the previous video, um, what would first, um, the first thing we would look at is the metrics of transformation related to standard basis for this transformation. So which means we are looking um, at this basis, the standard basis, so let's call it E for, in this case, we have R4, that will be E1, E2, E3, E4. And these are the vectors um, in the basis for R4. So for both the domain and the range of this transformation, we use the same basis, okay? So now, um, so just um, for proper reference, this is what I mean by E1, this is what I mean by E2, and this is E3, and we have E4. So the first step is to find the matrix of transformation related to the standard basis for both the domain and the range of this transformation. So which means um, first step is we need to find T of these vectors, right? So T of these vectors will help us to find that matrix of transformation. All right, so Let's take a look at this. So what does this mean? It means our X is one, Y is zero, Z is zero, and W is zero. So when we impute that into this, that would give us what? X is one, so the first component would be one. The other components basically will be zero, right? Because we don't have X in here, we don't have X in here, and we don't have X here, so it will be zero. Now, we do the same thing for the second one. Um, so quickly, T of um, E2, that would give us, um, we have Y here, so that's gonna be one, second component is one, third component is zero, fourth component is gonna be one, okay? So let me just double check, check that, okay, that's correct. So the next one is um, T of E3, um, so we have no Z here, no Z here. So in the third component, Z is two, um, I mean, in the third component we have Z, so two times one is two. And in the fourth component, we have Z again, and that is two times one. And finally, T of E4, that would give us this. Um, we have W in the last component, which is this. Okay. So this is what we have. And we mentioned that um, we basically can write the matrix of transformation because we are working with standard basis. Like I said, we are going to upload another video later on, which shows us how to do this matrix of transformation if you are working with different set of bases. But for this example, we can quickly write the matrix of transformation. Let's call it A. And all, all we need to do is we need to write this rule, um, this entries in each vector as a column here in this matrix. So this is what we have, right? So the third one, we have this. And that's it. Okay, now that we, we have this matrix um, of transformation, the next step, the next step is to find what we call the um, characteristic polynomial. Right, and what this is, is just, we call it um, this, right? This is how, this is the notation for characteristic polynomial. And all this thing is, is just determinant of this A matrix minus TI. And we already mentioned that this is this, A is this matrix, 
um, that we just obtained here. And I is the identity matrix for which would be four by four in this case. So basically what we are looking for is the determinant of this matrix, this A, but we subtract T from the diagonals. Oh, I think I might have missed uh, uh, one column here. Zero, one. Um, oh, um, I think um, I think I missed something. So um, in this metric, so let me just quickly correct that. So the first row written as first column, okay, that is correct. Second row as the second column, that's correct. Third row as the third column, correct. Okay, the last one we missed that. So let's just add it. Good. So everything's everything's correct now. So now we just need to add. Um, we just need to continue from here. So we minus T from the diagonals of this matrix. So let's quickly do that. Um, this is zero. And the last one we have um, T minus T. Okay. Nice. Now uh, everything is looking nice. So, so what do we do next? Um, now we find the determinant of this. And one of the things um, I did mention before is um, so when you find when you're trying to find them, um, a um, the determinant of a matrix and you have higher dimension like four by four, all you need to look for is the the simplest row or column to work with. And we can see the first column is the simplest one because we have so many zeros. So we use that. So that means to take the first, um, um, I mean the first entry of this column, uh, multiply it with the determinant. When we close the row and column of that particular entry, we write the remaining, um, we write the remaining um, entries of this matrix. So this is what we, this is what we have: one, two, two minus t. Right. I hope it's clear so far. Now the next thing is we need to take the determinant of this. Uh, now this one is much um, quite easy. Um, one of the properties of determinant is when you have a diagonal. Upper, upper triangular or lower triangular matrix. So what I mean by upper triangular, um, triangular, all lower triangular matrix, um, matrix, matrices. So um, the determinant of this is just basically the multiplication of the diagonal entry. So what I mean is, for example, um, this is what we mean by upper triangular. So let's say we have in, um, in matrix, these are the uh, these are the diagonal components. So um, we have numbers. We can have numbers here, no problem. But as long as so, this is what we call. Um, um, I mean, lower triangular matrix. That means the lower part has numbers. Then um, from the diagonal upward, we have all zeros. So this is called lower triangular, for example. And then we can have upper triangular, which is the flip side of things. Say we have um, we have this, right? So um, let's say um, two minus one. Let's say um, so. What's the next one? Um, so then, okay. So let me just. I'm trying to take the transpose of this basically to. So let's just take the transpose of this. Um, so this is, uh, um, okay, so I think I missed a part here. So let's just remove this and add, this is just three. So let's correct that. So um, let's say we have this, right? And this becomes the upper triangular, for example, of the same matrix, as you can see, the lower parts have only zeros and the upper part have numbers after the diagonal. So this is the crossing line that you use to determine the upper or lower. Now, when you have this type of matrix, um, one of the rules of determinant is, um, is that the determinant of such matrix is just a multiplication of the diagonal. So when we add, when we use that here, so let's come back to our problem. This will just give us, uh, because this is a lower triangular matrix, this will just give a multiplication of the diagonals, which is, um, let's just do that, one minus T um, times two minus T times what two minus t. So this gives us the determinant of that matrix. So in general, that means we have one minus t squared, two minus t squared. So this gives us the characteristic polynomial. 
All right, good. Now that we have the, the characteristic formula, what's the next step? So the first step is to find the agent values. So how do you find the agent values? Is this, um, that's basically the, um, the root of this characteristic polynomial. So when you equate this to zero, that means one minus t squared, two minus t squared equal to zero. This gives us t equal to one and t equal to two. And this have algebraic multiplicity city of two. Okay. Now, one of the things that um, um, that um, one of the diagonalization theorem says that for us to have um, a diagonalizable transformation, what must be true is this. So note, what must be true is um, algebraic multiplicity of each factor um, of the characteristic polynomial must be equal to geometric multiplicity of each agent value, right? So we'll talk about what geometric multiplicity is in a bit, but this is the algebraic multiplicity, the powers of these factors. Those are called algebraic multiplicity. So in this case, the agent value one has algebraic multiplicity of two, the same thing for the agent value, which is two. Now, um, what's the first step? The first step is now we need to impute this agent values into the um, um, into these metrics here, right? To determine the homogeneous solution set. So this is what we call the agent space solution for that particular agent value. So let's do that. So when t is one, what we basically have is, so let me, so that we can see this. When t is one, what we have is the matrix becomes um, zero, zero, zero. So we just substitute t as one into this matrix here, okay? So this will be two minus one, that will be one, zero, one, two, um, um, one, two, one, okay? Now, I just need to make sure that uh, oh, sorry, that's not the matrix. The linear matrix is oh, sorry. That's this is wrong. This is the wrong matrix. This is the right matrix, right? I need to substitute it. So let me um, accommodate for that. So one minus t is t zero. Um, then we have so um, let's just delete these entries and rewrite this matrix. So this gives us what. Um, um, one minus, so that's still zero, one, zero, zero. The next one, zero, um, zero, 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 right? So what will be the third one? Um, the third one will be zero, zero, one, zero, then we have zero, zero, one, two, one. Okay, good. Yep. Right, so we can zoom in now and then focus on this. So what does this mean? It means, like I said before, it's like we have a homogeneous system and we're trying to solve for the, um, for the values of x, y, z, w, right? So the first one gives us what? Zero times x plus one times y plus zero times z plus w times zero equal to zero. So that just basically y equal to zero, y times one equal to zero. The second one, we have nothing there, right? The third one, we have z times one equal to zero. And the fourth one, we have y times one plus two times z plus one times w equal to zero. Now we need to solve this. We already know that y equal to z equal to zero. So when we substitute zero here for both variables, that gives us w also equal to zero. Now, the only variable we have no condition on is x. So x can be anything, right? That's what it means. So therefore, this solution space um, the solution set that we have is x can be anything, the orders must be zero. So which means um, we have this, right? So this for this agent value, it is spanned by this vector. Now, at this stage, we don't need to continue further to find um, for the other agent value. At this stage, we can conclude that what the, uh, 
um, the transformation is not diagonalizable. How can we do that? Um, notice that I did mention that what the algebraic multiplicity of each factor or of each agent. Um, so let me just correct that of each agent value. Agent value. Right, must be equal to the geometric multiplicity, right? Now we know that what the algebraic multiplicity of um, of t equal to one is what two. Now, what is geometric multiplicity? So, geometric multiplicity means the number of vectors that spans um, the solution space of that agent value. So, the number of vectors here that we have that will span this agent. Value, um, agent space of this agent value. As you can see, we only have one vector, right? But then, so geometric multiplicity of one is going to be equal to one. You see, there's a mismatch. So your algebraic is not equal to the geometric. So for that, we can then conclude that our T is not diagonalizable. Now, this is a very um, this that theorem is very powerful because we don't have to go through all the process of finding for the case when t is equal to two, which is the other agent value. We can rightly just conclude at this stage. So that will be, um, that will be the end of this particular video. Please um, don't forget to like um, the video and comment and then subscribe to the channel so that um, um, this um, this useful resource can help other students like you. So if you have any particular request, um, something that you particularly don't understand or you want me to elaborate on or make a video on, make sure you um, comment below so that I would see your comment and then take that into effect for the next video. So I will be seeing you guys in the next video. So have a, have a nice day.